Welcome, welcome, welcome to Above Replacement Radio. I am your host, Chris Gianta. I might be becoming a bad baseball fan who can't enjoy the romantic things because of advanced statistics. 15 years from now, I want to be on the early baseball committee. Over there on the other side of the screen is Daniel Curran. I literally have the fan graphs hoodie. The baseball reference t-shirt is repping some stats, you know what I'm saying? It's not necessarily Hall of Fame. It's not necessarily above average, but we can guarantee you we are better than just the standard replacement level college sophomore. And welcome to Above Replacement Radio, where we're talking baseball kind of whenever. I'm your host, Christian. Over there to my actual left, as you cannot see on YouTube, unfortunately, is Daniel Curran. How you doing, Daniel? Chris, I am doing well today. It's been a couple of weeks, but... We're we're actually going to start getting on a weekly schedule now that opening day is not upon us, but like pitchers and catchers report is like a couple of days away, so that's like yeah. really really exciting. Yeah, uh, it was truck day, obviously. Yeah. Um, which is, I mean, it's awesome, you know. Yeah, and given that it's pitchers and catchers soon, like that means a lot is is going on. Right? Yeah. 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 That means it, it so means much baseball is basically back, like right now. Yeah, and uh, you know, like. I can't wait to talk about the 780 different guys who are in the best shape of their lives right yeah, now. Yeah. Yep. Um, feeling great. Had a great off season. Um, Definitely gonna hit 85 home runs this year. Yeah. Or, or strike out 600 batters. Yeah, I'm really basing my players to watch uh, based off of the uh, the pitchers, like the pitchers and catchers. Yeah. Spring training. No, this is this is what determines a lot of what goes into the season. Like you know what Aaron Judge said last season. He said he felt really good. Yeah, he said like, and he had never said that before. Yeah, he he never he never said that, and boom, he had sixty two home runs. Yeah, that's what he did. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, my yeah. my bold prediction this year, I think Cody Bellinger's feeling really good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like the best he's felt in four years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> I think my where I'm placing my bets is I'm saying, um. Javier, Di- Javier, Javier Baez feels a little more comfortable this yeah. year. Feels yeah. A little more comfortable with his environment this year. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, it's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while since we've, uh, broadcasted, um, but, or, you know, two, three weeks, but yeah, not much has been going on in the world. So the, or in the, the baseball, baseball world, baseball I think world. the last time we broadcasted was the live hall of fame reaction. Yeah. Um, which was pretty cool. Scott Rowland got in. Scott Rowland got in. Everyone lost their minds that didn't vote for him. Yeah, right. Or yeah, and like people who I don't know. It's just weird. People are very selective in the thing the thing that I realized is that based on the reaction to Scott Rowland that I saw, if Bobby Abreu ever gets in, I'm taking paid time off to watch Twitter the entire day. (laughs) That's gonna be the most fun day ever. Yeah. (laughs) Because everything that people don't like about Scott Rowland Bobby Abreu possesses like times five. Yeah, which is no disrespect to him. I think he's a Hall of Famer. You think he's a Hall of Famer? Yeah, I would be very happy if he gets into the Hall of Fame. To be fair, though, I will say like at least Abreu has like he has like a lot of stolen bases and and like hits and home and and home runs. Like I think he has more hits and walks than Roland does. Because Roland. Roland, like basically the entire basis. Is like you have to include wins above replacement to yeah. his argument. Bobby Abreu, you don't really have to, but yeah, it will be because I think just there's a there's just an a, a an aura or lack of aura around Bobby Abreu mm-hmm. that just makes people not want to vote for him. Yeah, and that was my initial reaction with, to Bobby Abreu on the ballot. I was like, huh, Bobby Abreu, no, nah. <laughs> but yeah, no. He's like, really good. Yeah, Brian Kenny, like the the year before he was on the ballot, uh, did like a Cooperstown breakdown. I was like, okay, like seriously, like mm-hmm. this this is where we're at. Yeah, I was like, wow, this is late stage analytics, <laughs> where we're talking about Bobby Abreu, and I was like, actually, we're talking about Bobby Abreu. We're talking about Bobby Abreu. <laughs> but yeah, it is it is funny to see like people freaking out over Scott Rowland when like. All you got to do is like look, look at half the people in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, look at half the people in the Hall. Look at people who have been like elected in in like the 70s and 80s. It's like Even like I mean mostly like the 20s, 30s and 40s. Right. It's, or well played that. played then. Like, there, no one was elected in the 20s. Like yeah, High Pockets Kelly. That's the first name that came to mind. Who's been Ray Shock obviously. Who's been uh 
referenced and his name was changed to George on baseball reference, unfortunately. This is But George Kelly had uh about like a third of the wins above replacement that Scott Rowland did, but he's in the Hall of Fame. Rabbit Marinville. Uh yeah, Rabbit Marinville. One that we've discussed a lot. Yeah, Ray Shock, 33, 33 wins above replacement. Not saying that, yeah, everyone above 33 wins above replacement should uh, get in the Hall of Fame. But, I mean, the idea that we're just letting anybody in now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we've been letting everyone in for a while. <laughs> and that's why that's Also, why we're letting, also, they're letting, like, no one in now. Like, right. this is the least active Hall of Fame few cycles we've had in a long, long time, probably ever. Yeah. Like, well, there have been two people elected over the last three cycles. Yeah. And, it's, and we're talking about no one getting it. Or we're talking about how we're letting too many people in now. Right. And and now, it like, for the most part, the um, the ballot is cleared of, like, the steroid, of the main steroid guys. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can't even have that excuse necessarily. John Heyman, I think it was, wrote a really fun column where he was like, it was funny because the headline was like, no, like the Hall of Fame voters should be criticized. Like they, like they are doing not a good job. And I was like, okay, like let him cook. Let's yeah. see it. So I read the article, and he was like, "We're too easily influenced by stats." And I was like, "Oh no, uh, oh no." <laughs> like, what do you mean influenced by? St- I don't know. Like, it was like it was like oh, there's a, there's a people on Twitter that advocate for Scott Rowland, so it, naturally like people felt pressure to pick up the slack. But like Jeff Kent, for example, like no one really started a Twitter campaign for him to get in, so that so people didn't vote for him, so he fell off the ballot. Yeah, well, I mean, there's reason why Jeff Kent didn't get one and Scott Rowland did get it, that's, one. That's that's yeah. You know, I you know I I remember in 1936, you know when. When, when someone started up a, a Christy Mathewson for Hall of Fame Twitter account, and that's yeah, why he got in. Yeah, like, you're too over-influenced by his stats, you yeah. know, his 373 <laughs> career wins and his 1.29 FIP in 1908. It's just too... And also too, his playoff stats. Yeah, his playoff stats when he didn't allow a single earned run in three starts in the yeah. 1905 World the Series. The fact that he had an 097 playoff ERA and over 100 innings pitched. Yeah, like... There, it, there are two like, did, easily like, influenced. Just yeah. look at the guy and see if he's a Hall of Famer. That, that's it. That's all you have that's to do. That's literally all you have to do. Because listen, you have these special eyes where you can like, it's like in like the Iron Man movies where like you can see inside of his suit and like get like intelligence on people. It's yeah. like Hall of Famer. Yes, exactly. And I know that Christy Mathewson had retired about 20 years prior, <laughs> but you still should be able to remember exactly <laughs> how he how yeah. he looked and you shouldn't look at any stupid numbers because they're stupid. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude. The Twitter account was like, "But look at his, but look at his, his FIP. Hey, look at his ex FIP in 1936. Look at, yeah, look how many innings he threw. Look how many times he won 25 games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. I think I think the 1936 Hall of Fame committee was too over influenced by Hannes Wagner's <laughs> 3,400 hits. In my mind, his two hundred eight OPS plus. They in nineteen oh eight. They shouldn't have been looking at his seven hundred plus stolen bases. They should have just been. Lo- they should have just looked at the field and determined if he was a Hall of Famer. Yeah, I mean, look at that guy. Yeah, like that's not a Hall of Famer. No, he had he did he had bowed legs. <laughs> you think that's a Hall of Famer? Yeah, and I look at Babe Ruth and I'm like, you know what? That that's it. That's the only guy. Yeah, and it's not because of his 714 home runs. No, it's, you just look at him. It's, you're like, that's a Hall of Fame baseball player, right it's there. It's not because he hit 342 at, while like tripling the. Uh, it's not because his OPS was was higher than his WHIP. Yeah, it, it's it's not because um, he like tripled the amount of home runs as the second place guy <laughs> in the league. It's because of how he looked. Yeah, that's why. Yep, that's exactly why. Um, so yeah, people are way over influenced by stats because you should really just be able to look at a person on the field and, uh, determine if they're a hall of famer or not, you know, dis- disregard the, the 20 years of numbers and just kind of go with your gut, uh, in my, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, that's, um, you know, hall of fame, hall of fame talk can get interesting eventually. Yeah. Eventually, we'll the funny thing too is is John Hammond voted for Scott Rowland. Yeah, he was like, "Why did Jeff Kent?" It was mostly it was mostly 
it was not as much a why did Scott Rowland get in and a why didn't Jeff Kent get in. Right. Which, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think it's, I, I, I only voted for Jeff Kent this year because it was his 10th year and I had an extra spot and I was like, you know what, why not? Yeah. I'll just yeah. do it once. He won't get in. It won't matter. Yeah. And he, he kind of, he, they had the same career OPS. Yeah. Kent had a more, had a higher approval, um, among like, yeah, the older school guys, like, or at least over like the past few years, given, you know, he's, you know, most home runs ever by a second baseman. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you have to kind of regard that. And, um, a career 500 slugging percentage. Yeah, career 500 slugging percentage. Um, you know, I think character-wise, people liked him. Um, <laughs> not really. Oh, really? No, he was n- he was n- reportedly not a good guy. Oh, oh, maybe that's yeah. why I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Maybe if he was a better guy. <laughs> yeah, no. He had more votes. Um, well, he and Barry Bonds, like, wanted to kill each other every single day. Yeah, well, to be fair, Barry Bonds didn't seem... No. too likable either no but it was it was definitely from reports they were apparently both in the wrong in some way but right. i i don't think that should matter yeah i just yeah i would assume that um so yeah but yeah anyway the an extension of our hall of fame talk it is fun to talk about that because really that's the only thing that's happened since the, yeah or the last the, time we recorded january 24th yeah since like the correa deal um Mm -hmm. since that whole mess was finalized but yeah um what we will talk about is uh artie moreno just really pulling off oh my god a uh (laughs) the worst troll (laughs) doc job of all time just a real just hanging the hanging the keys in front of the in front of the fan base and just pulling them away i saw a lot of tweets from angels fans saying like this is the worst day of my life yeah. And, like, I think they mean it. <laughs> like, people can throw that around. That's legit. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we've, we've, we have talked about it when that news came out. It was over the summer, I think, yeah, because we were recording on Zoom at the time. Mm-hmm. When, yeah, I think it was announced. Jeff Passan tweeted out, like, Artie Moreno is, like, looking to sell the team. You know, yeah. no real favorites yet to buy the team, but... They're kind of exploring selling the team, and then he was just like, "Nope, nope. I need to. I need to keep owning this team." Yeah, it's like that meme where it's like the like the depiction of the guy like mining, and it's like he stops right like by the diamonds, and he just turns back, <laughs> <laughs> and like that. Like Artie Moreno saw that image, and he was like, "I gotta keep going, man." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I wonder what this means because yeah if he's if he's announcing that he's keeping the team he's probably keeping it for at least another few years um if they let otani go man it's gonna be a bloodbath yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be a bloodbath for sure um and yeah i mean that time of year is upcoming you know spring training a lot of these extensions happen um you know this would be a time where the angels would be talking to shohei otani about you know, because this is literally his the last year of uh, control before he becomes a free agent and gets eight hundred billion kajillion dollars. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, I thought Mike Trout deserved five hundred million. I mean, Otani is definitely going to get that. Yeah, um, that would be a steal. Yes, five hundred million would be a steal for Shohei Otani. Um, what are your thoughts on uh, this this whole ordeal? It's catastrophe. Um, I mean, if if Artie decides to maybe sell again, he's gonna have a lot less suitors because a lot of people are gonna see what happened last time and be like, nope. Yeah. Like that is that's gonna turn a lot of people away, and it's probably gonna turn away anyone that is promising for the Angels as a franchise. Um, you know, like I don't think if Artie sells, they're looking at a guy like Steve Cohen coming in and and you know doing all of these things that the fans are gonna love. Right. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's. I would hope that Artie at least, I don't know, like most owners from what I see are pretty tone deaf to to the public. Um, I don't know how much Artie pays attention to that or how much people let him know. Like, by the way, Angels fans are devastated that you're, you're staying. Yeah. Like, I would hope that at the very least he's going to change up his ways because he's notoriously been like one of the most hands-on owners in the league. You know, he does more than just sign the guys. He actually does a lot of the baseball operations himself. Obviously, that's not worked. Mm-hmm. Um 
And I mean, we've seen plenty of his former GMs go other places and thrive. You know, Jerry Depoto is now, you know, he took the Mariners to the playoffs. Uh, Billy Epler took the Mets to the playoffs. And I think Perry Manassian is a very good GM for what it's worth, but he's under Artie Moreno right now. And yeah. maybe if he's ever let go, like whoever whoever gets him next is going to have a bright future. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. And, um, you know, with the baseball operations stuff, I, I remember 2020 or 2021, um, there was a long article on ESPN about, you know, mistreatment of minor leaguers and the Angels organization was spotlighted. Yeah. Um, as like, you know, the, the focus of the article. They're probably they also one of the like, worst ones. Yeah. And they also like every single year have a perennial like worst farm system or like bottom five farm system, including this upcoming year. Yes. And we see all the time that they don't treat their minor leaguers well. Like they treat them especially bad. Like even yeah. like the standards are already low, but the Angels don't even meet those. Yeah, and you look at like you look at who they've picked like first round every year since Mike Trout. Yeah, it just hasn't been great, and I don't know if that necessarily, may you know, it can't be all bad luck. You know, there's probably some player development issues and stuff, um, and I don't know, maybe maybe Artie Moreno is someone getting getting in the way of that. I know at this point, um, or I didn't check the updated uh, rankings, but I know. I think they only have one top 100 prospect if it's like last uh, year. They have, I think, two or three. They have Logan Ohapi as their top prospect who they traded Brandon Marsh for straight up. Yeah. Zach Nito's in there, oh. um, who's a pitcher. Um, and I believe there might have been one more. Let me check Pipeline real quick. But yeah, I know um, midseason last year they only had one top 100, but I guess I guess they have more now. They do have like a bottom five farm system, though. Like that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which is not great considering they're still. Yeah, no, up it's and only coming. it's only Logan Ohapi and Zach Nito that are who's Zach Nito by the way is not is only in a he was just drafted last year he was their first round pick last year and he's 89th overall which is not great. Yeah, like if you're a first round 13th overall pick, people are probably hoping you're you're above 89th overall. He's also he also played in Double A last season already. So yeah, like they're they're pu- they're really pushing him. I don't know. I mean, I don't know anything about the situation. Maybe it's what he wants. Um, oh, Hoppy looks pretty good though. Yeah, but he also was developed by the Phillies. Yes, he was. So, and uh, and yeah, they do tend to put like the Angels do tend to push guys. I know Joe Adele. You know, give he, he was a top five prospect. I mean, look at Reed up, Detmers. But he came up at twenty. Reed Detmers was he the pitched next like guy. three games in the minors. Yeah, right. He <laughs> yeah he. He was he drafted had a total in, of like seven peanut butter and jelly sandwiches yeah, for lunch. He, he drafted. He was drafted in 2020 and then came up uh, in 2021. In 2021. And by the way, there wasn't even a minor league season in 2020, so he exactly. had like three months worth of minor league experience. And to to his credit, he pitched pretty well down the stretch last year. But yeah, but he know, it took him a while. Could have used more time, I guess. Yeah, um, but he threw a no hitter. Yeah, he did throw a no hitter early in the season, so he must have been good. <laughs> Um, but, but yeah, um, so yeah, the angels, yeah. And you, you mentioned the, the GM, how you think he's good. At, yeah. He's, he, he made some pretty good small moves that are probably in his control more than the owner. I mean, the angels have like real players this year. Like, like he, I, I, he got Tyler Anderson, who was like mm-hmm. an all MLB nominee for a uh, cheap thir- deal for, yeah. 33 million less than Jamison Tyon got yeah. or no uh than Taiwan Walker got I yeah. think yeah and Tyon they got 29 hey, 29 less than Tyon they got Brandon Drury who is like a solid everyday player who can also play a lot of positions they got Hunter Renfro uh yeah, yeah like they made a bunch of a uh, solid moves they have and they got Gio Rochelle they have real players this year yeah yeah alongside like, I looked up I looked it up and like I don't remember what the stat was, but it was like overwhelming. Like the overwhelming number of their plate appearances last year went to players that had like below a ninety OPS plus. Mm-hmm. I want to check what the exact percent was. Yeah, but yeah, and that's alongside Anthony Rendon is going to come back. You know, we'll see how he, he is, and then of course Mike Trout, Shohei Otani. Fifty eight percent of the team's total plate appearances went from were from guys with an OPS plus below ninety. Yeah. Not below 100. Below 100 would be even worse. But 58% of the pl- total plate appearances went to below 90. 
OPS plus players. Yeah, so well over half the players that's like hitting for the thousands of plate appearances. (laughs) Yeah, well over half the plate appearances were going to guys at least ten percent below league average. Yeah, about like a hundred games worth of of plate appearances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, not great, and um, you know, could could put that on the owner. I mean, it hasn't worked out. They they've mm-hmm. they've been to the playoffs once since two thousand nine. Yeah, and they got swept. And they got swept. They, they haven't won a playoff game since two thousand nine. Yeah, they haven't won a playoff game in in yeah fourteen years now. Um, yeah, not great. But any anything more on uh, Artie Moreno? <clears throat> no, I think that's really it. I don't know. It sucks. Yeah, it does suck. Um, <clears throat> what do you? Do we want to get into uh, extensions or MLB the show first? Let's get to extensions. Yeah. Um, the biggest one, the biggest extension to happen uh, since we last recorded was uh, Jeff McNeil. Um, Steve Cohen, after it again, uh, extending more guys. You know, he, he signed Brandon Nimmo to eight years over the, uh, <clears throat> over the winter, and he just extended Jeff McNeil through his age... 34 season or did it include this year um no it did not so 35 season um jeff mcneil oh no it did sorry it did include this season but there's also there's also a club option for 2027 okay um you know jeff mcneil coming off a batting title uh 836 ops as well um you know he's been he's been a kind of a staple for the mets lineup you know outside of 2021 for um you know ever since he got in the lineup Mm -hmm. 2018 Um, even yeah 2018 he was a big part of it too um what do you think about this uh about this move i mean my immediate reaction is that this is clearly a guy that wanted to stay in new york i mean four years and 50 million dollars for a guy like jeff mcneil who not only won the batting title but also a guy that you know doesn't just hit for contact like he is a pretty good with on base percentage he can drive the ball when he needs to he's a solid defender like he's i wouldn't say he's a five tool player but he's a very good player that you want on your team um and he could have gotten more than that i i think is a pretty easy assessment to make i mean he had a 382 obp last year a 140 ops plus um and he's a career 128 ops plus so i mean when you see Steve Cohen coming in and making all these moves like this is this is part of the result you see guys that are like hey you know what like I'll take less money to be here because like we're gonna be good every single year yeah and it's it's definitely um good for the fan base too because you know I think the Mets I think Mets fans generally really like Jeff McNeil Mm -hmm. um he's he's really been a net positive for all years except for you know, an injury laden in 2021. Yep. And he came back immediately this year and, you know, put up a 140 OPS plus. Um, yeah, he's a guy that can get doubles too. Um, you know, not, not necessarily, uh, part of what I'm talking about, but yeah, he, he's, he, he's a, he's a solid player. Um, yeah. And he, yeah, he definitely could have gotten more, I guess, I guess him still being technically in arbitration, brings him down a little bit maybe caught you know like if if this was a free agent contract this could have been like maybe 10 million more yeah but still like i don't know i feel like he would have gotten more on the um open market yeah i mean like i said this is the result of of making moves that make players want to stay yeah um i have to assume pete alonzo's next right he's in arb two this year uh which is yeah crazy he's, time he, is flying that pete alonzo is almost a free agent yeah th- this um yeah th- McNeil and Alonzo are in the same situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, McNeil had two more years of control, and uh, so does uh, Pete Alonzo. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how Pete Alonzo gets paid because, you know, home run and RBI wise, yeah. you'd see, you know, he's he's one of the best. But you know, in terms of actual value, um, I, th- I think he's a he's like a between one and two hundred million dollar player. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Um, so yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see what they got in store for him, but yeah, McNeil, um, it'll be, it'll be nice for the Mets to keep him around, you know, has the versatility, 
uh, can play second base and outfield, um, you know, can just do a lot, can be there a lot of the time. He's always going to get in the lineup. Um, all right. And uh, the Rays extended a, a lot of different players. I guess we could start with talking about um, Yandy Diaz because he's coming off a really, really good year. Um, he hits the ball extremely, extremely hard. Yes. But, yeah, he's coming off a year with a 143 OPS plus in 137 games. Got MVP votes, finished 20th in the MVP. Which you could probably argue we should have done better. Uh, yeah, right. Um, what did you think about the Rays uh, committing to him for a couple more years? Um, I mean, I think it's pretty dope that the Rays are spending, but also, you know, um, I would like to see more. And they have done a lot, to to their credit. Um, the Rays have extended Manuel Margot, Yandy Diaz, Jeffrey Springs, as well as Pete Fairbanks, all in the last, like, couple of weeks. Um, also, uh, they, I believe they, uh, got some information about their stadium. Like, the city of St. Petersburg, like, chose to, to pursue one of the projects where they're going to build the Bass Pro Shop Pyramid. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Have you seen the blueprints for that park? No. Hang on. But, uh... Via yeah, Yandy Diaz um, has been a positive, um, a positive offensive contributor his entire career. Um, oh yeah, the Bass Pro Shops Pyramid. That's cool. Yeah, it's gonna see. Oh, I mean, it's gonna be in St. Pete, which is obviously not ideal, but it's gonna be like a thirty thousand seat stadium, which I think is. I mean, it's gonna be, I guess, better for the team because their stadium's gonna look a little more full. Except this kind of looks lame, but still better than Tropicana. Yeah. Looks very bland. Are they going to have a white roof again? I hope not. Oh, my God. <laughs> if they just build... If they just have they a just build giant, Tropicana 2. Yeah. They just have a giant, expensive project, and it's just not as, the same quality <laughs> as Tropicana Field. Yeah. It's somehow worse. My God. Um. Anyway, this is not, this is not the time to bash the race, though. Um... I think it's very cool that they are, you know, at least committing to guys, even if it's only a couple of years of arbitration. Um, I don't know. There's really not that much to be said about it other than they're doing bare minimum good stuff. Yeah, with Yandy Diaz, he had, uh, I think, two, two more years of control left. Yeah. Um, so they basically bought off another year of, of Diaz, which, you know, this is these are deals that the Rays like, that the Rays like to make. Um, mm-hmm. With Jeffrey Springs... I think that one was interesting, for yeah. sure. Yeah, it was interesting. Because um, he didn't have that much time. I mean, he was probably still pre-arb, right? If I had to guess. Yeah, he, uh, service time was at... Um, I don't know. He, he he was in arbitration. Huh. I guess, yeah, he had four years of service time. I no okay, idea. so they bought out two years. Um, yeah, they, they bought out... Yeah, they bought out two years... Um, which is which is good because I think the Rays have had a little bit of trouble, like holding on to starting pitching, um, or like, uh, in terms of like guys like Blake Snell, mm-hmm. you know Charlie Morton when they signed him he was kind of on the older side, um, you know Tyler Glass now is good but you know they haven't really had extension talks and he hasn't really been healthy as in his time with Tampa Bay. So, you know, Jeffrey Springs, he's a guy who came off an amazing season, 135 innings, 2.46 ERA, 3.04 FIP, um, great strikeout to walk numbers. Uh, and, you know, they're they're figuring like, hey, I mean, this guy's work is working right now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I guess we can make a little small longer term commitment and buy off two years of uh, of this guy. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't really have anything else on, on this. Uh, Pete Fairbanks was coming off one of the best uh, reliever seasons that anyone had last year. It's like, I mean, obviously it was a smaller sample size, but he was really dominant in the time that he was there. Yeah, Pete Fairbanks, yeah, when healthy and when he's throwing strikes is, like, unhittable. <clears throat> he had a, what was his FIP last year? It was, like, in the low two. It was 086. Yeah, oh, I was low about to twos. say it was yeah. below one. Yeah, he had 14.3 strikeouts per nine, 1.1 walks per nine, and 0. .4 home runs per nine. 
and four point nine hits per nine as well. He had a whip of point six six seven. <laughs> wow, he gave up uh, a base runner in two out of every three innings. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's it's that's insane. a lot. It's yeah, not a not a high whip at all. Um, and yeah, Fairbanks. I assume they're buying off a year or two of uh yeah of free agency from him. Um, but yeah, he'll be a guy, you know, he, he was kind of not necessarily the same, not, didn't have the same impact on the stable in 2021 or the beginning of 2022, but probably going to be prominent again in 2023. Yeah. He's a guy to watch out for, for sure. Cause yeah, last year, the, the raised bullpen, it wasn't really as intimidating as it kind of has grown the reputation as, as it, you're, you know, it, the Rays bullpen kind of grew a reputation like in 2020 and 2021. And in 2022, it didn't really live up to that. They just had too many guys injured. Mm-hmm. Um, so Fairbanks, you know, he, he's a good guy to keep around because, you know, it's not the, the, the bullpen isn't completely interchangeable. So it's good to keep that guy around. Um, all right. Do we want to get into the uh, the show cover? Yeah, let's do it. So Jazz Chisholm. Uh, was announced as the cover athlete for MLB The Show 2023. Yeah. Um, an interesting decision, but certainly a very fitting one. I mean, MLB The Show, you definitely go a lot for personality, and Jazz Chisholm has that. I mean, there's no doubt. Right. Uh, what were your thoughts, Chris? Yeah, I found it I found it really... Yeah, interesting is a great way to put it. Mm-hmm. Um, because, yeah, I mean, you... You look at him on the cover and you think like, okay, if you showed me this, like, yeah, if, okay, in in this timeline, if you showed me this and said it was like the MLB The Show 25 cover, I'd be like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. But like the 23 cover is really interesting because he hasn't, yeah, we mentioned it before the show. He hasn't had a full healthy season yet. That was good. That was good. Yeah, a full, his, his a, only full season, he had a 95 OPS plus. Um, I think the show is running a risk here. I think that's the nicest way of putting it because, I mean, like I said, Jazz Trism has yet to produce a full, solid, healthy season. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's either been healthy and 95 OPS plus or very good, but not able to stay on the field. Um, and, I mean, at the end of the day, it is you are just picking a, a guy that's marketable, and Jazz Trism is absolutely that. Yeah. Um, and I think, and I mean, I'm happy for him. He's a dope guy, but um, it's definitely one of the more interesting, like, non-conventional picks that they've made in recent years. Yeah, absolutely. Like, um, yeah, very interesting not to go with an established guy given their history. I mean, I guess the last time they didn't go with a necessarily established player was like. Uh, Yasiel Puig. He was maybe? definitely established, though. But he was established. He was but very established. This is the least established guy they've put on the cover by far. Um, one guy we forgot to mention who also didn't get the cover, Francisco Lindor. Yeah. He he, he was <laughs> like, that's the guy you're going to put on. Um, Mookie Betts, they haven't put on the cover yet. Um, although they've, they've done a Dodger in the last... 10 years. 10 years. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like... Yes, he he definitely brings the personality. That's why they that's why they had Tatis after his second mm-hmm. year in, in the yeah. league. Uh however, Tatis also in twenty twenty was I think top five in MVP. Yeah. Chisholm, maybe if he played all maybe if he played hundred and forty games last year, maybe he would have gotten some MVP votes. Mm-hmm. But also, yeah, like he wasn't really on the field. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't have a problem with it. I just think it's interesting. Um not that it, not that this influences anything, but I I'm not buying it this year. I didn't buy it last year. I I don't know. MLB the show for me is like it's the same thing every year and also I'm just not I just don't dedicate enough of my time to it to be good at it because I mostly play Diamond Dynasty. Yeah. And you have to you have to really commit to that if you're going to be good at it and I just I just can't. Yeah, I still... And I'm also just flat out not good at the game to begin with. Yeah. Like, I'm not good at hitting. Like, I don't put the zone in the right place. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. I also am that guy that swings at everything. Yeah. Like, you could throw it eight feet outside, and I will swing at it. Oh, yeah. 
if I'm if if it's determined I'm swinging, <laughs> it's happening. Yeah, like it could be a slider that started six feet outside. Yep, I, I'll, I'll look like Todd Frazier out there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, no, it doesn't, you know, not that the cover athlete would influence anything. I don't think there's a single player where I'd be like, I'm buying the game just for that cover. Yeah. Uh, one thing they did announce today, actually, they announced this just a couple hours ago, which is very cool. They're partnering with the Negro League Museum and putting in a bunch of, like, the all-time Negro League players in the game. So, like, Buck O'Neill's going to be in the game. John Donaldson's going to be in the game. Satchel Page. Um, That's great. Jackie Robinson before the Brooklyn Dodgers. I didn't see if they put uh, Josh Gibson in there. I don't know if they did. I yeah, hope they Satchel did. Page and Josh Gibson would be great. Would be great. I didn't watch have. the full trailer because I did. Uh, yeah, go Satchel, somewhere. But Satchel Page would his fastball velocity rating would be definitely in the nineties. Um, Rube Foster's in it. Yeah, yeah. I know. For me, um, I've I grew up. I've always been an Xbox guy, just because my friends have always had that. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I was really excited to get MLB The Show 2021. Um. I got MLB The Show 2022 because I just I wanted to wanted to try out a, a franchise. But yeah, I, like, yeah, I you know I probably won't because I'm not like a Diamond Dynasty guy. I won't get the new one. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the cover doesn't really have anything to do with that. And I buy I buy. Uh, I don't even buy disc copies anyway, so the cover doesn't really matter that much to me. I have no idea if this is legit or not, but I'm seeing a, a post on Twitter uh, saying that the uh, like some of the like the cards of the Negro League players, where it's like Satchel Paige, Cool Papa Bell, Oscar Charleston, Turkey Stearns, uh, Josh Gibson, uh, Buck Leonard, just to name a few. Rube Foster. I don't know if that's legit or if it's like a fan edit. Um, mm. but dude, a Josh Gibson card would go crazy. Yeah, <laughs> that would be disgusting. If we were in control of of uh, the cards, I think we could come out with some really good ones. Yeah, like a eighteen eighty four special edition Fred <laughs> Dunlap old Hoss Radborn. Yeah, uh, yeah, Pud Galvin. Yeah, Pud Galvin, Hugh Daly. Hugh Daly was a <laughs> monster. He struck out everybody. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think I think we would. Executive edition with John Montgomery Ward. Yeah. <laughs> like he he adds ninety nine overall Marvin Miller. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then yeah. It it like controls the marketplace of like the uh the players. Yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> like if you like you can get players for cheaper if you have the ninety nine yeah, Marvin if Miller. You, if you if you yeah, if you're like, even sell- though that'd be even though that'd be like the exact opposite of what he did. No, I guess you could do if you s- yeah, if you sell on the marketplace, yeah, you get more back. You get more back. Yeah, you get more back. It wouldn't be, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, it doesn't change the price because then it would there would kind of be cheating for like other people. Like, imagine you just have like a, I don't know, you have like the ninety nine Jacob Degrom, and you're just like, yeah, I'm putting this up for a million stubs because I have the ninety nine Marvin <laughs> Miller. Then who's gonna buy that? Yeah, true, but. But I think it would be like it, like it actually goes it, for like two forty five, but you get way more back. You get way more back. Yes, yeah. yeah. That, yeah that's. The, that's not, I mean, San Diego stadiums are making you. You're, we're giving you a free idea here. Idea here. Yeah, we're not even working for you, and we're giving you great. We're giving like you great Marvin, ideas. You won't. I don't think you'll have to worry about Marvin Miller like being not being associated with the players' union because like he literally invented it. Yes. Not yes, literally, but like he basically invented it. Right. The modern player union. Uh, yeah, dude. Imagine you have like a ninety nine Kurt Flood. Oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> he's he's gonna make sure that he gets get, gets what he deserves, no yeah. doubt. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, <laughs> get a ninety nine less man. <laughs> ninety nine, yeah, nineteen like sixteen less man. Can we get <laughs> less man in the in MLB the show, please? <laughs> Go listen to episode one eighty. Not on YouTube, by the way, because of the amount of co- copyright strikes or the copyright right, yeah. things. I put in a lot of music. Yeah. Not because 19. Don't do 1916 less, man. Do uh, 1920. Uh, yeah, 1921, even though he played 97 games. Who cares? He was a great platoon man uh, from 1921 to 23, I think. For um, those of you who don't know, Chris and I uh, presented at a local Saber chapter about less, man, because he played at the college that we attend 
uh, which is a Division three college, so not a lot of Major League Baseball talent has flown through here. But yeah, he didn't Les even... Mann did so and played in the MLB for 16 years, and he also lived on campus while playing for the 1914 Miracle Boston Braves. Yeah, he didn't even play um, baseball here. He played football. Yeah, against Jim Thorpe. He played against Jim Thorpe. Um, Jim Thorpe said he was like one of the best players he's ever seen. Yeah, 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 and... Uh, he also was part of a win over Syracuse, Les mm-hmm. Man was. Um, go listen to episode 180 on Apple Podcasts and Spotify to learn more about him. Because, yeah, we also did we did kind of that presentation, but in podcast form, organized. And there was a ton of music in it, which is why it can't be on YouTube. And there was an interview with his grandson. Interview with with his grandson, for sure. Yeah, that was, uh, that was good stuff. Helped us get to Baltimore. Yes, it for, did. For free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for Sabre 50. Um, all right. Helped us meet Mark Simon. Helped us. Is really what is really the the main end game there. Yes. Mark's, yeah, it helped us meet Mark Simon, which was really cool. Not something we expected either. <laughs> well, yeah. something, I think it was in the, it was definitely in the back of my mind. But I was like, I wasn't going there and being like, I'm definitely going to see Mark Simon. Yeah, no, I wasn't thinking about it. But when I saw him, I was like, yeah, obviously, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Well, anything more uh, you want to spill out before uh, we head out? Or actually, um, what I was thinking, I forgot to mention this to you. Are we doing randomization for the yeah, division? Yeah, I'd like to. I think the only right. I think at we the should... end of each episode, I think we should do a Okay. I think I think the only thing we should do though, I don't want to do any of the centrals last. Yeah, true. <laughs> I think we could just do a uh we could just put all six on a randomizer right now. And then we could just like type it in. Um uh, should then... we do like a list or just like just, yeah, do one. like a, a random random list generator. Random list or order generator or whatever. Generator. Um, okay. Yeah, that's the one I usually use. Just do, like, the three-letter abbreviations. So, yeah. A-L-E, N-L-E. So, next week, we're starting our division previews and our players to watch, which is probably my favorite, like, annual thing that we do. Um, because I spend the entire off-season working on it. And we're about to find out the order in which we're doing the divisions. Yeah, and... So, we're yeah. doing one per show per week, up yeah. leading up to opening day. We got a player to watch, we... We kind of go over the additions and subtractions from each team. Yeah, we also uh, ask each other questions that we don't look back on at the end of the year. Yes, th- those are fun. But yeah, and and the the players to watch, we always try to go under the, under the radar. Yeah, no, you will not be hearing like my Angels player to watch is Shohei Otani. Yes, you will not be. <laughs> you won't be hearing that. You you know try to go fringe and try to s- almost like predict a good season for the for the player. Mm-hmm. Which uh, sometimes doesn't work out. We we do review those. Yes, we do review those, and we talk about our, our hits and our flops. Yes. All right. So, Shout out to Stephen Kwan. So our our division next week we will go over will be the NL Central, like originally we had it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thank so we will go. Yeah, we will go NL Central next week. Um, there are three div- there are three teams that I don't have a player for yet. None of them are in the NL Central. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. I already got my players. Um, All right. Yeah, let's take a picture of that so we we know. We'll we'll keep a we'll keep the order hidden from you guys, but we yeah. we know the exact order we're going for. Fun, fun, fun. All right, we are going NL Central, so we're talking Reds, we're talking Pirates, Cubs, Brewers, Cardinals. So exciting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love the NL Central. <laughs> Surely they all of, the, all of the great teams. You just know that players. you just know that the team that wins this division is going to the World Series. <laughs> oh, not only that, you know that they're getting past the division series. You know that they're they're destined to win in the playoffs because <laughs> they've done so every year since 2020. Yeah, they've <laughs> they they do that. The AL Central is way funnier with that though. They haven't the last time an AL Central team went to the ALCS was the 2016 Indians. Yes, that's true. So it's uh, six straight seasons that they've not made it past the division series. Yeah, because at least yeah, at least with this NL Central, you have 2019 Cardinals, 2018 Brewers, 2017 Cubs. Yeah, they had a streak going. They had a yeah. streak going. Yeah, they did. I think, uh, the five. funny because the AL Central also had three straight uh, teams in the World Series between 2014 and 16. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, right. Royals and uh, Royals, Royals, 
Indians. In Cleveland, yeah. All right, so we'll be talking NL Central next week. Yes, we will. Lovely division. Um, all right, so that does it for this installment of Above Replacement Radio. We hope you enjoyed this one. If you are listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, go to the YouTube channel, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, we've got a lot of cool stuff there. Even though we're not on video right now, we got shorts um, You know about some of the... Our BABIP thing is kind of doing well. It had over 700 views. I noticed um, that. That's like as much as Barry Bonds had home runs. Yeah, it's it's one away. I think it had 713. It's almost breaking one, Babe Ruth all, territory. Yeah. Um, <laughs> In views. But yeah, um, you know that that's some cool stuff. You know, get your get yourself ready for the for the baseball season with some of our shorts. Because yeah, we got some stat explanations, and I also want to do um, some stuff from the history series from way back. Oh yeah, in ARR history, because I think there's some really fun stuff that uh, that would that would you know. Rogers Pe- Hornsby did what in yeah. Texas? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I have to. <laughs> sometimes I have to hold my back hold myself back from <laughs> doing stupid titles but yeah um go check out the youtube channel there's some good content there um and if you're listening on the youtube channel uh and you don't want to listen you don't want to have your youtube app open while you're listening to us uh go to go subscribe to the apple podcast and spotify feeds it's called above replacement radio just like the youtube channel um, if you want to follow us on social media, follow me on Twitter at Chris underscore Gianta. Follow me on Instagram at Chris Gianta. Follow Daniel on both Twitter and Instagram at Daniel underscore Kern. And follow the show on Instagram at Above Replacement Radio for all the show needs. We hope you enjoyed this one, and we hope to see you next week where we will be talking about players to watch and more with the NL Central. We will see you then. This conversation. This conversation is over. Is over.